Hello guys, I recently saw this tweet, 31 prompting tips collected by Eric from Cursor Core team. And this is a great list, but this is not really practical. So I want to show you four tips that I've chosen from this list, my kind of favorite ones with practical examples, how I use them in my projects, and you can then use them in yours. So without further ado, the first one I wanted to show you is this. Number 15, ask for the model's plan before applying code changes. Especially for longer tasks or actually tasks that consist of subtask or work with a lot of files, here's an example. If you want to generate a full CRUD with model and migration, for example, database structure in Laravel, this is actually not one task. Even just the CRUD is not one task. It's controller with seven methods like index, create, store, and others. Then there are validation files, whether separately or not. Then there are blade views for putting it on the web. Then there's route and stuff like that. So if you launch it just like that, the results of the code may be unpredictable because along the way you would need to supervise quite a lot of things to review at the end. So the result will be like 10 files or so. And if down the road you see that cursor goes sideways, generating not exactly what you had in mind here planned, then it's hard to correct the course. Instead, you can add to the prompt something like this. Provide the plan, don't write code yet. And if we launch that, this is the result. It provides the to-do list, but also then at the end, more details. So database layer, and for example, you may not like some of the specific decisions, or for example, you may decide to add soft deletes to the model, or a typical example in Laravel, whether to use service class or not. For simple CRUD, I would not overcomplicate the project with service, so I would correct the plan now as the next prompt. This could be the follow-up prompt. So you launch that, it would update the plan. So basically you work on planning phase for bigger tasks before writing the code. And this would ensure not only the code quality, but also small details that otherwise you would miss if you just launch the prompt and see what happens kind of in a YOLO mode. So yeah, while I was talking, it updated the plan and probably there should not be any service class anymore. Yep, that's correct. And also deleted add is added with soft deletes. So this is in cursor. You just prompt it for planning mode. In Cloud Code, there is a specific feature for that. If you launch Cloud Code and hit Shift Tab twice, then you enter Plan Mode, which basically means whatever you prompt here will be just treated as plan and it will not write any code. It will just provide you the plan. So in this case, for the same prompt, you don't need to add provide the plan as text. It will know to do so because you are well in Plan Mode. And let's see what Cloud Code does for us. And here's the result of the plan. Database layer, model layer, filament CRUD. It suggests to use filament, which is part of this project, which you may or may not agree with. And also it adds user model with has many relationship. And here you can choose whether to just proceed writing code or choose like I will do no key planning. And this would be my follow up prompt instead of filament use Laravel. And let's see what it does. It's still in plan mode, as you can see on the bottom left. And here's the updated plan six steps instead of four, but no filament here. So it replanned with this set of action. And then from here, as I said, you may proceed writing the code and executing the plan. In cursor, you can also just proceed. But in that case, you need to tell the cursor, please start writing code or something like that in text format. In cloud code, the plan mode is finished when you just choose yes from the options. And with that tip about planning mode, I want to emphasize alternative. So three tips from that list. They're actually a little bit duplicating each other because they are from the community. But look at number 11, limit tasks per prompt, which means smaller tasks. The same idea in number 19, work file by file in focused testable chunks. And we will get to the word testable in a minute. And finally, number 27, break down large tasks into small incremental steps. So to avoid working with a lot of files and work with planning mode, Alternative is to prompt the AI agent, for example, to prepare the routes, then create the database structure, then 
create the controller and stuff like that file by file or small task by small task then it's more predictable easier to review and smaller chance of missing something important like a small detail that was generated not as you planned now for tip number two let's return to that testable chunks thing and i will emphasize a few other tips grouped together so tip number one is write prompt that describe the diff so you need to kind of reverse engineer in your mind what do you actually want as a result which is exactly the point number two think of the end state i remember i've heard the same tip about business for example if you're brainstorming a product idea start with press release so imagine yourself on stage or online putting out the article like we released something how would you phrase things what do you want in that official press release for the public and then reverse engineer to what product should actually do so same here also similar tips number 12 provide validation methods to guide agents like tdd so this is where we get back to testable which is more precisely described in number 20 lock tests first then generate code which is exactly tdd so you can actually do tdd in your prompt this is, in my opinion, kind of an extreme version because I'm personally a bigger fan of generating or writing tests after the code or at least along the way because by then you know the functionality better because there are more details to come. But if you want to do this way, let's try it out. In TDD mode, cursor or cloud code could generate the test for you before writing the actual code so we don't have any of those controllers models or database structures yet and we start with generating the test let's see what happens well according to the to-do list cloud code didn't go all the way towards tdd so create past test file is fine the first point but it should have stopped here then it wants to create model and controller and routes but this is kind of against tdd so do you want to make this edit and here if you are using cloud code for example inside cursor or inside of php storm or other ide you may look directly at the changes how that test file would look like and of course it is underlined because the route and the view doesn't exist yet but this is the test that would deliberately fail at first and then you write or generate the code for that test to pass not sure have you guys tried tdd exactly in the same way with ai coding share your experience in the comments below but basically the message here is that you need to write automated tests for basically each of your prompts each of new feature it's just a question of when do you do that before the code like in tdd classical style or as part of the prompt you ask it to generate testing files testing methods which would be executed after the prompt is done to verify at least partially that the feature is working correctly without automated tests i would not fully rely on human testing because as humans admit it we are lazy to test everything manually and also models are pretty good at coming up with various scenarios that you potentially wouldn't think about tip number three is point number six in this list is reference existing code patterns it's not necessarily code patterns it may be specific code so when prompting you may reference something like this bad and good example of the code how to implement a specific feature you may put it inside of the prompt or inside of cursor rules or cloud md file or guidelines so for example in my user rules in cursor for testing i have this bad example of testing arrange phase creating the record and a better example of variable name more meaningful and overriding some function variable to create more meaningful unique records also of course you may provide a file for reference for guidance like create a file similar to task model in this case then it would analyze the file structure and try to mimic the same structure but generally this is the tip if there are multiple ways to create code your specific examples from the same project or other projects or general guidelines would help a lot for cloud code or cursor or any llm in fact to choose which way to go with generating the code and finally in this video tip number four which i will not even show in cursor or cloud code it's very simple it's very short commit regularly so after working with ai coding agents for 
almost half a year now actively, more and more I realize that Git is my savior. Whatever happens with AI, they sometimes hallucinate, they sometimes delete the code, they sometimes generate too much code when not needed, and to roll back, of course, those IDEs have something like restore checkpoint, or you can also reprompt to revert the changes. But actually, Git history is your final frontier, so to speak where you can see the changes because quite often you need to get back to two or three commits before. And this is kind of a general rule of using Git, commit in small things, small pieces, manageable, again, testable. But this point has kind of a double meaning, double value with AI agents. So whenever you finish the prompt, happy with the feature, somewhat happy, commit to Git repository. You will totally thank yourself for that later, make that a habit. So yeah, four tips I've chosen from that list kind of most important for me in my cases and in my practice, but I will link the full list in the description below and you can comment which ones are important to you or how you implement the ones that I've shown in this video. If you want more AI coding tips from me and also industry news like GPT-5 released, I've started a free Substack newsletter and the next issue coming tomorrow where I will summarize not only my YouTube videos for the week but also what I've read from the industry on Twitter, Reddit and elsewhere. So this was the issue for last week, something like that will be sent every Wednesday to your inbox. So subscribe to that. The link is in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.